modernizing the entire power system really. And uh, the push that is coming because of our targets is also going to have multiplier effects because it is going to eventually contribute to reduction of losses both in the transmission and distribution side. And uh, from what I've been seeing evolving over the last uh, couple of years, it's going to make a difference in reinventing the entire way the system operators work and the way the discoms are, um, their business models and the work they do. So eventually I'm sure uh, that uh, this partnership is going to be very fruitful. And uh, um, uh, our ministry and the power ministry led by Pujari sir and uh, both of us led by our minister Piyush Goelji are dedicated always uh, to working together as a team and therefore uh, there are no coordination issues here. We are going to be uh, working together. I also want to congratulate Ray Gigi and his whole team because I was there last year at Bangalore in the Smart Grid Week and it's wonderful to see how things have grown since then. It's, it's a much bigger event and I expect a lot more to come out of it. And um, I'm really looking forward to the sessions. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. And ladies and gentlemen, with that, it's time for the inaugural address. And I now have the privilege of introducing Sri Pradeep Kumar Pujari, Secretary, Ministry of Power, who is a 1981 batch IAS officer of Gujarat cadre and is the Secretary, Ministry of Power. Previously, he was Special Secretary and Financial Advisor, Department of Agriculture, Research and Education, Agriculture Ministry. And in his long, illustrious career spanning over three decades, he has held various offices of importance, both with the government of Gujarat and government of India. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sri Pradeep Kumar Pujari. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here amongst such distinguished speakers. And uh, in the one hour that I spent here, I dare say that I learned quite a bit about the smart grid. I also like to congratulate uh, ISGF for holding this uh, India Smart Grid Week. The timing couldn't have been more appropriate. This is because the focus in India power sector now is primarily on the renewable energy, on the efficiency, and also on the distribution sector. If you have been watching the Indian power sector, the general impression one gets is that at the moment, there is sufficient capacity, but as was mentioned, the government of India is committed to bring in a large scale renewable capacity by 2022. As was mentioned, about 175 gigawatt, out of which about 100 gigawatt will be solar and 60 gigawatt wind power. So it has its own challenges, but as was mentioned, it also provides an opportunity, especially for the smart grid. That's why I mentioned saying that this is the right time to talk about the smart grid and give a push to it. As far as transmission capacities are concerned, again, in the last two years, we have added a huge capacity as far as the inter-regional transfer transmission capacity is concerned and making the national grid almost adequate. Yes, we have some areas of concern, we are going to address that. But broadly, today you are in a position to transmit any amount of power from one regional grid to another regional grid, and the national grid is operating as a unified grid. And if you have been watching the Indian power exchange price, which earlier used to throw up different prices for different reason, on many of the days now, you have unified exchange price, power exchange price for the country as a whole. That's a good signal. As I mentioned, the focus is on the distribution sector. And Government of India has, in the last year, has launched two major schemes to strengthen the distribution sector. 
under both the schemes, one with the rural area, which is called Dindya Lupadhyay Gram Yoti Yojana, DDU, GJY, and one for the urban area, that is IPDS, Integrated Power Development Schemes. The emphasis is to strengthen the distribution network and focus on increasing the efficiency. The distribution sector, mainly managed largely by the distribution utilities, control by the state governments has not been in a very, very healthy uh, state of affairs, both financially and uh, as far as the efficiency is concerned. So a few months back, Government of India launched, came out with a scheme, which is called Uday, to undertake the financial restructuring of the distribution uh, utilities and also handhold the utilities to improve their operational efficiencies. And Government of India, its departments like MNRE, Ministry of Coal, Railways, Ministry of Power, together with the state government and the utilities will work towards improving the operation, operational efficiencies, mainly the, the major area of concern that is high ATMC losses. So we are basically targeting to reduce the ATMC losses, which on an average today, national average is about close to 25% to about 15% in the next two to three years. So when so much of focus is on uh, distribution sector, it is natural that the smart grid is going to play a very pivotal role in achieving these targets or the objectives. So introduction of the smart grid and smart metering is a step in the right direction. If you look at the Uday scheme that we have launched, it stipulates certain milestone relating to the smart metering, the communication system, and strengthening of the distribution system also. So together, basically the emphasis is to come or move towards a smarter grid. The focus of IT interventions, both at the government of India level as far as the distribution utilities are concerned and the state level has been on the reduction of ATNC losses as I pointed out. However, the smart grid, apart from aiding in further bringing down these losses, shall also help in improving the quality and reliability of electricity supply to the consumer, which is the basically one of the objective of the government of India saying making available 24-7 power for all at affordable prices. The traditional electric grid will need to build additional layers of automation, communication, and IT system to transform it to a smarter grid. Some of the building blocks of the smart grids are well known. The SCADA system, EMS, DMS, ERP, GIS, EMI, MDAS. Now, under the existing schemes that are being implemented now, which was earlier known as RADRP, that is Restructured Accelerated Power Development and Reforms Program, and now IPDS. Some of these basic building blocks of the smart grids are already being implemented in urban areas. We had selected about 1,400 towns, the towns which have a population of more than 30,000, as per 19, uh, 2011 census all across the country. And this infrastructure can be effectively, so we have been doing, basically bringing in and implementing these building blocks into the, uh, the urban grids. So the, the point at, at this point is that the infrastructure can be effectively, this particular building blocks can be leveraged to transform these utilities to move towards smarter grids with low incremental cost. So it's a right time, good opportunity. The process of implementing smart grid in distribution sector was initiated. We, we realized that uh, about a uh, few years back. So the process of implementing the smart grid in distribution sector was initiated through uh, taking up pilot uh, projects in interested utilities across India. And uh, uh, the basically the focus was on demand response, demand side management, outage management, peak load management. The uh, aims of this pilot project was to provide insight into integration of consumers by deploying smart meters for peak load management through demand side management to test functionalities of the rooftop solar in renewable integration, parcel load shedding, brownout instead of complete blackout. So these experiences that we gain in the last few years is going to help to move towards a full fledged smart grid uh, rollout plan. And uh, this, this pilot projects has and will be helping utilities to gain insight into the condition-based monitoring of the critical assets like distribution transformer, et cetera. So these pilot projects that we have implemented are at different stages of implementation. During the implementation of pilot projects, it was felt that the smart grid efforts required urgent 
concerted focus to which it was necessary to create a comprehensive institutional arrangement capable of uh, with, the, with the manpower, resources. So therefore, the smart grid uh, vision and roadmap of India was launched in 2013, and subsequently, the smart grid mission has been launched. The broad scope of the smart grid mission, which is headed by an, uh, an ICE officer, and uh, is now taking off in uh, consultation with the various state governments, utilities, private players, and other stakeholders, is to basically deploy smart meters and AMI technical upgradation of the uh, GIS, development of medium-sized microgrids, uh, development of distributed, DDG, distributed uh, generating. So these are the broad areas. Also, if you, if you recall, on the 15th August uh, 2015, the last Independence Day speech, uh, Honorable Prime Minister announced saying that a large number of villages in the country are still to be electrified. They don't have access, about 18,500 odd villages. And it was announced saying that uh, in the next 1,000 days, that is in about two years' time, we're going to provide electricity access to all these villages. Now, most of these villages are located in, in difficult areas in the northeast and in deep forest and tribal, uh, 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 tribal areas. So apart from in many of those villages, precisely about 3,000 odd villages, it is not possible to take the grid. So we are also planning, saying that uh, there will be microgrid and off-grid solution to these particular villages. Many of the households, they are there, are also in a very sparsely in hilly areas. So again, we're going to go for the standalone system to provide accessibility to them. So combine all those off-grid solutions, standalone systems, along with the regular grid upgradations and making them smart. Because of the integration of the large-scale renewables, which itself is a issue, both solar, rooftop, and the wind. A lot of work needs to be done, and uh, I'm sure saying that all the expertise, all the ex experts who are here, they are sharing of experience and learning, and uh, uh, and and working out. And if any suggestions specific to the Indian power sector, uh, will be most welcome. And government of India, that's why, you know, willingly becomes. Uh, a, a participant to such efforts, and I'm sure saying that all the deliberations that comes out from here will help us to create a roadmap which will be implementable and will give a correct directions and uh, uh, the, the best possible solution to move towards smart grid, which will help in addressing some of the issues that I've already mentioned. So in the meanwhile, we have also had enabling atmosphere is also being created rapidly. The model smart grid regulations has already been issued last year and are being adopted by the state regulators because there is a need for a regulation to be in place and that is also being done. So uh, if, you, if you, in summary, uh, the future uh, demand and supply issues in the sense that increased consumption of power will take place because as was mentioned, uh, uh, the per capita consumption of electricity at the moment is pretty low in India, so obviously we are aspiring to increase it. There is an access issue, about 18,000 odd villages don't have access, we're going to give access to them. About 50 million households don't have access to electricity. The government is targeting that by 2020, 2021. We are making effort to provide access to those households, so obviously there will be increase in demand and supply, increase in demand. Uh, then uh, there is, uh, 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 issue of aging infrastructure, the, as I mentioned earlier, there is a large scale upgradation is required as far as distribution utilities infrastructure is concerned, uh, uh, both uh, because of age factor and also the new technology. There is issue of the peak demand, if you, uh, that, that needs to be addressed. At the same time, there is a issue of integration of the renewables. And as was mentioned by uh, Chief NTRO, uh, within the electricity reliability issues, we have to have the address the issue of system adequacy and also system security and the cyber security. So I think these are the areas which uh, we will look at and uh, 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 looking at the outcome of these uh, deliberations. So once again, I uh, compliment uh, ISGF to, uh, for having organized this uh, workshop and have invited so many experts and uh, definitely the deliberations uh, will help us to formulate our policy help us in implementing uh, uh, implementing the schemes, help in basically convincing the state utilities to consider and 
uh, making them uh, willing to work together. And I'm sure saying that working together, we can move towards our objective to make the power sector more vibrant and achieve the objective of power for all to uh, reliable and quality power by 2020-2021. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have seated on the dais Mr. Prabir Sinha, the Chief Executive Officer and Executive Director of Tata Power Delhi Distribution Limited, a joint venture of Tata Power and Government of Delhi. He has over 30 years of experience in developing and setting up of greenfield projects, and I'm now going to request him to extend the word of thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Prabir Sinha. Good morning. On behalf of uh, India's Smart Grid Forum and the host utility, Tata Power Delhi Distribution, I would like to propose a vote of thanks. Uh, my sincere thanks is to the chief guest, Mr. Pujari, uh, who mentioned that the emphasis of Government of India is to improve the distribution center sector. And many of the things that he said will be music to the ears of all the experts and the delegates who are participating because power sector reforms have to happen, then it has to happen in the distribution sector. That is the place where the challenges are. That is the place where people have to reach out and supply power to the consumer. And especially in a changed environment where we are talking about decentralized energy. And he shared the vision of Government of India and how uh, he is championing the cause of bringing in distribution reforms and also uh, supporting the smart grid initiatives through various programs of Government of India. I would also like to thank uh, uh, Ms. Varsha Joshi. Uh, she mentioned that uh, MNRE is a catalyst for the smart grid. And I think uh, the type of uh, initiatives and the type of agenda that it has and the huge uh, capacity addition that is there will play a very, very pivotal role in bringing in the transformation and bringing in the smart grid which will make the consumers the generators of electricity and to that extent they become the prosumers. Uh, we have uh, an excellent panel. Uh, we had uh, uh, Sir David King, who, th who is a champion of climate change, and he talked about how the transformation is taking place not only in UK market, but also world over. And while on one side there is a demand of more usage of electricity, there is also a opportunity that how do we use non-carbon energy, how do we use it effectively. Uh, this presentation uh, by Professor Amory was very clearly brought out that there are a number of ways that in which you can optimize usage of electricity, how you can do conservation of en energy, and how smart grid can play a very, very important role in bringing in efficiency and, uh, uh, and reliance in better quality supply. Uh, we had Mr. Henry Steingas. Thank you very much for coming over here. Henry has been a long-time supporter of India and has supported many pro programs in India with the DISCOMs and with very many other agencies uh, to bring in uh, better efficiency in power distribution. And uh, uh, as usual, uh, whenever we have a program, he makes it a point to be here. So thank you for your support, Henry, for being here. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Richard Skoberg, who has been uh, a technical guide and a support for India Smart Grid, and has been uh, going through various technical papers, advising us what sort of roadmap we should set for ourselves and what sort of policies that should be there. So thank you very much, Richard, for being there. And then we have uh, both the smart ambassadors, uh, both of them have given us the option either to go to Scotholm or to go to uh, Helsinki. Uh, we'll use the smart way of traveling, which, is, uh, which will lead to less of pollution and less of carbon. Uh, and uh, thank you for uh, the support that uh, both the ambassadors are providing uh, for various uh, initiatives, especially in microgrid area uh, in different parts of the country. Uh, lastly, I would like to thank Chris, uh, who has uh, been coming many years to India, he knows uh, uh, that it takes time. These are new initiatives. These are new policy directions. It's going to take time. But whenever it will happen, it will be a huge 
thing that will happen in this country. I would like to also thank all our sponsors. Uh, there are plenty of them, all the delegates, all the exhibitors, and all of you for coming and participating in this program. And also to the staff of Manik Shaw Center for giving us a wonderful uh, venue for this program. And also a lovely place where we have having the exhibitions and I'm sure all of you will get the opportunity to, ge to go and see the various uh, uh, technology companies who are participating over here and the, and the s solutions they are suggesting for the Indian market. So I once again thank all of you for being part of this inaugural program and would request you to join for tea coffee and also to see the exhibition. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, before we disband, there are very important things that we have to do at this moment. First up, I would request uh, Shri Pradeep Kumar Pujari ji to present small tokens of our appreciation to all the distinguished dignitaries on the dais. Shri Pujari, I would request you to please uh, hand over these uh, mementos to the esteemed dignitaries, starting with the uh, ambassador of Sweden, Shri Pujari. May I request you to please present to the ambassador of Sweden, ambassador of Finland, His Excellency Apopolo, and the other, Sir David King, A big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Amory Lobbins. Ms. Varsha Joshi. Ladies and gentlemen, can we please uh, have a huge round of applause for all our distinguished dignitaries. Mr. Henry Stengas. <laughs> Professor Richard Schomburg. 